Not bad. Just got a couple of games of squadrons in and now uh, ready for this awesome interview going on. Awesome. All right, let me see if I can get you going. All right. All right, there we go. We got you. Boom. Let me get you over. All right, beautiful, man. Thank you again for doing this, man. Appreciate you. Um, and and usually, you know, I'd, I'd like to start by like, you know, for I, I've been watching your stream for a while. You know, I'm, I'm a big squadrons. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a big battlefront, uh, you know, fan. I've been playing it since mm -hmm. it came out. And, uh, you know, just seeing how you've been growing over the well, past year, really the past couple of years. Um, it's it's heartwarming. Right. So the thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, the, the the Star Wars community has somewhere to go, and you know, there's a lot of different streams that complement that, but uh, yours complements most of that. So I I thank you again ahead of time. Uh, let me just get you situated real quick. Uh, so while I get you situated, uh, we have two rules, right? Mm -hmm. So the first rule is if you have so if I ask a question and you don't feel like answering it, you are more than welcome to say pass. We're, we're okay. not gonna, we're we're definitely not gonna stick to it because uh, again, like we we want you to feel as comfortable as possible, right? Okay. Um, and the second rule was um, what was the second rule? Well, that's really ma mainly the only rule. If I come up with the the second rule in a second, then I will definitely uh, let you know. But really, it's just if you don't feel any comfort. Any comfort and any questions, just let me know. Sounds good. I'm ready to get this done. All right, let's do it. Uh, so we're going to start with demographics. Mm -hmm. um, so demographics is really uh, just numbers. Um, so let us start with your name. So what would you like me to call you today? Uh, you can either call me Chris or DD Man. Probably DD Man. Most people call me by that. Okay. Or DD. Okay. DD is probably the shortest. Didi, sounds good. Yeah. And uh, how old are you, Didi? 25. 25, okay. Let me put that down real quick. Okay. And your gender? Uh, male. Male, okay. And your race? Uh, Caucasian. Caucasian, gotcha. Yeah. And your ethnicity? I don't, I don't know. The, ethnicity? I don't know if I have one. Oh, I, have, uh, I don't have a specific one. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it's anything that really comes to mind, whatever you uh, feel rooted to, right? Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just pass on that one, to be honest. Okay, we'll pass. Sounds good. Uh, gaming platform, I'm guessing PC? Yeah, PC. PC, sounds good. Dude, why does my camera make my forehead look huge? What the fuck? I feel it. <laughs> Dude, you look great tonight. You look fucking beautiful. I'll tell you that. Appreciate it, man. Of course. And your stream platform would be Twitch. 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 Okay. Okay. And how long you've been so uh, throughout your whole life, how long mm -hmm. you've been really gaming? When did you Oh, uh, ever since I was 25 now. Ever since I was a little kid, I, I don't think I have an exact age, but probably if I had to pinpoint one, maybe the age of 10. Age of 10, okay. So, say about 15 years, right? Yeah. Okay. Whenever Windows 95, 98 came out. <laughs> Holy shit, that feels like forever ago. Um, and so, over your lifespan, how long would you say you've been streaming? Uh, I took streaming seriously about two years ago. I used to stream on and off just for fun, mm -hmm. which was random. I would stream for like a month and I went stream for like another six months. But I would say two years when I took it seriously and actually started doing it almost every day. Okay. So two years plus those months on and off. Yeah. Say. Yeah. I made my, sh I, I started probably like in 2012 and, and I would just oh. do it here and there. But I really started you know, getting an interest in actually streaming as a hobby or as a career uh, in December of 2018. And in a second, we'll get to whether... So that you consider yourself now full-time streamer? Uh, I mean, according to the IRS, basically, but I don't stream <laughs> enough to be... Uh, 
I stream. Uh, I don't stream full time hours, but I guess okay. you could say I take it seriously now as a career. All right, so let's let's put you down. I'm gonna say full time, just for now. Uh, so your community. So what kind of community do you have over here? Um, I try to promote a uh, an accepting environment where people can just relax and chill, but it's also a mixture of, um, you know, kind of a meme trolly messing around community as well with a little bit of tryhard throw in there. Uh, when I first started streaming, I'm not going to lie, I was a extremely toxic person. I was not a positive person at all. I took I took gaming way too seriously. And I, I learned on, on Twitch and streaming um, in general, be honest with you, a lot of people don't want to hang around a community that promotes that kind of negative environment. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of changed my character of gaming. And I guess I'm just, it kind of just stuck with me. And now I just... I just like to game and have fun. I mean, everyone gets toxic here and there, but I really try to push past that. It makes us a place where we're going to have a good time and relax. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into, so we're just doing demographics now. So we'll get more into detail as the interview goes on, but mm -hmm. I appreciate you opening up about that and um, kind of just setting the pace for this stream. I'm, I'm looking forward to what you have to say. So uh, uh, average daily streaming. So per day, how, what is your average daily uh, usage of uh, of your stream, so like four or five hours. I would say four hours is the average per day. Sounds good. And uh, average daily gaming. Uh, most of my game time is on stream. Uh, off stream, the only time I really game, um, if it's like during a work day, is usually with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a couple hours, but I would say maybe add an extra. Uh, hour onto it, hour or two, so five to six hours total, okay. including including streaming. And um, so here now we're getting into social media use. Okay, so okay, um, how often would you say you use social media per day? And that's including Twitch. Uh, including Twitch, uh, I will say I used to use it a crap ton a year or two ago, mm -hmm. um, but. I've kind of realized the too much use of social media does a very negative effect to your lifestyle and mm -hmm. it can latch onto your mind and it can, it could be an addiction. Basically yes. you always want to have this verification, this people agreeing with you, people want, like just that attention. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very, very bad thing. And I've been trying to distance myself on Twitch off stream a lot, like off stream when t stream ends, I probably spend a max off stream an hour on Twitch. Uh, off stream and maybe a little bit on Twitter to, here and there to post updates. Uh, but other than that, I probably spend an hour and a half max social media off stream. I really try to limit myself on that. Okay. So I'm going to say, so max hours. So I would say about like five hours, would you say? So an hour uh, extra. For what, including streaming? Yeah, streaming. Plus oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah, yeah, five hours. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my other rule was, um, it's just you and me, baby. So we're not going to be even looking at chat at all this whole time. It's just, it's just you and me talking about life. Gotcha. All right. All right. So now we're thinking about before you were streaming. Um, you said you didn't use a lot of social media, um, but you did use it a lot before you started streaming, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how, how many social media platforms did you use before you started streaming? Uh, I would say Twitch was always my biggest. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't know. I don't think YouTube really counts. Yeah. I just use it to watch. It does. Yeah, it can. It can. Okay. Well, I would say YouTube. I, I I probably spend at least a couple hours a day just watching random videos, anything from documentaries to gaming stuff. But, mm -hmm. um, but before that, Twitch was always probably my most primary, primarily big one. Um, I don't really use. Uh, I haven't used Instagram in like ten years. I don't. I rarely use Snapchat. So it's mostly Twitch. Before I became a streamer, uh, I would probably spend a day on average, six to eight hours just watching Twitch every day. Mm -hmm. It was a crazy amount. Uh, what about Facebook? Uh, oh, I, I dumped Facebook. I, I, I hop on there to check my parents, and that's pretty much it. Okay. I, don't, I barely touch it. So how about we say like two, three social media apps? or? Sure. Yeah, that, that okay. works. Okay. And what about after streaming? So now that you started streaming, what is your count at 
uh, and social media total, including streaming. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe max seven hours a day. Five, six hours. I would say six hours, actually. Oh, th I meant the number of platforms that you use. Uh, Twitch, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter. I think that's it. Okay, so we'll put three. All right, good job. You passed the boring stuff. Now let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so th now let's talk about your life before you started streaming. Like growing mm -hmm. up, playing video games, um, whatever that that life may be. Uh, let me see what that was. So uh, when you first started gaming, what really inspired you to keep going? Like, what was that game? Uh, and what was it? It was just a, it was just a new world and a because when I was a kid. Um, because I guess Windows 95, 98 was the first PC I ever had. And I remember the games I played on it. Uh, I played, um, these old ass Lord of the Rings games, um, some like Lego games and just like, you know, those crappy games that come pre-installed with the computer. I played that pinball game probably at least 500 hours. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I think it's the addiction and the fact that it was a new universe and gaming wasn't really huge back then. It was kind of like uh gaming is bad to spend a lot of time let's just spend gaming at all you should go outside so it was a new universe and i really enjoyed it and i, I just was fascinated with how every couple years it just got better and better and better mm -hmm. so with the you were talking a little bit about stereotyping about video games that didn't really mm -hmm. get to you really you just uh going. no it was mostly my parents who were against it they were okay. really very i mean i love my parents they were really very hard on how much gaming time i could have like they were they were on it like they what they used to do is that we used to have this timer and um i only got to play games also if i did all my schoolwork and i had good grades and i would get about 45 minutes a day or 30 minutes a day to play video games after that i i, I couldn't play so my parents were just strict on it because they just didn't want me to get enveloped in that and they wanted me to you know be you know, they didn't want me to get addicted to it and they wanted me to focus on school and other stuff. So I can respect that decision. Right. And so did, did they actually have a stopwatch and like use that stopwatch for the 45? Yeah, it, it was, it was a, yeah. it was a timer. They said it would go off. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah. I'm and sure, I'm sure when it went off, you, that was probably the most annoying sound you could ever hear. Yeah. No, I would look at it. I'm like five minutes left. Oh shit. Can I finish this low? I got to get this done quickly. <laughs> So, oh but yeah, I mean, they're, they're more lenient now with my other brothers and sisters. Um, cause they realize technology is basically integrated everywhere these days. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can't really avoid it. So they, they understand as part of like the generation, that's what they grew up with. But back then technology wasn't huge. I didn't grow up with, you know, I had a Windows 95, 90 computer. I didn't have a, f a phone till I was like 15. It was a fl fl flip phone. I think mm -hmm. it was like 14, 13, I had a flip phone. So I didn't have a lot of technology growing up. Damn. Yeah, I, my parents are strict about cell phones. I got my cell phone when I was 15, too. I, I didn't, like, I barely even used my phone for apps or stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just because you just get it so late, like, you're just conditioned to just, you know. You, you already know you can get everything yourself right. at that point, so you don't you don't care as much. Doesn't even matter anymore. So, uh, what about social media apps when you were growing up, like, when you were in elementary school? Uh, I would say I would, Facebook was the big thing when I was growing up. Everybody had Facebook. I used that a lot. Um, I was probably on that at least a couple hours a day. Everybody used Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. But other than that, that was probably the only major. Well, there was MySpace way back in the day. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, I, yeah. I used that a little bit, too. But it was mostly Facebook I used uh, growing up. But now, you know, no one, no one young uses that anymore. Was it like Facebook when you got into high school and you just wanted to be a part of the gang? Yeah, yeah it, it was it was MySpace when I was before high school. Then high school right. went to Facebook, and everyone was using it then. Yeah, that's. I can relate. <laughs> um. So, let's talk a little bit about mental health. So, mm -hmm. when you were growing up, what was it like handling stress and anxiety? We'll start there. Uh, I wouldn't say I had a whole lot under my parents' house, stress mm -hmm. and anxiety. I think my parents did a good job at relieving a lot of that. Um, I did okay in school. Uh, I didn't get my high school degree. I got my, uh, when I got older, I, I stopped, when I got my high school, late high school, I kind of stopped, you know, 
I wasn't the best kid at that point. I just started ignoring school and I got my GED, mm -hmm. uh, left high school, um, moved out and stuff like that. Kind of regretted doing that, but um, I didn't really have a lot of stress anxiety when I was with my parents. That st didn't start till after I left my parents. So what made you want to kind of go, kind of sway away from the, what was it, public school? You went to a public school? Uh, I went to public school when I was young. Uh, I was actually homeschooled for uh, the majority of my high school. Okay. Um, and, and I have to say, homeschooling, 50 million times better than public school. Only downside is you don't get a, all that social interaction with your friends. Mm -hmm. But what I loved about it was you could, you didn't have to start school every day at 6 a.m. Um, I would start at like 9, get it all done. I would do sometimes my schoolwork a week ahead in advance, and I would be off school for a whole week, and I would just go and do what the hell I wanted. Mm -hmm. play games go out, out and do stuff so i really think homeschooling is better also it teaches you what you need to know rather than the bullshit public school teaches you mm -hmm. so and, and you said that you kind of missed your friends a little bit when you did the homeschool aspect because you weren't around them yeah that that that, uh, that was the part that sucked and i guess that's what drove me um and not being around them all the time i guess it's kind of what drove me deeper into getting involved into gaming and meeting people uh on gaming communities because you know when school was in session all these people i knew i couldn't really hang out with them so i would go and game and then i would hang out with these people online and i guess that's what drove me more and more into gaming that's awesome that's that's really cool um, yeah i'm not you know i'm I have one friend who's been homeschooling. He he actually really enjoyed it. I uh, enjoyed his experience. I mean, again, he missed his friends, but that that's really awesome that you had a positive experience growing up with homeschooling. Um, mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about your parents. Huh? Okay. So so you said that they were strict on gaming, but you had a pretty. Uh, it wasn't you know life wasn't too stressful or whatnot. So what were they like, and um, did they ever kind of like push you to doing you know push you towards a career path oh no my parents were very supportive of anything i wanted to do okay. uh, i was initially interested in business and i changed that to coding uh I, I i know c plus plus and some other stuff and i used to do that and then i guess i just i i, I did i stopped enjoying it and right now i'm pursuing a career a career in criminal justice i'm finishing up my degree in school um but they've never once were against anything I did. They were always supportive. They were always taking me out to uh, uh, specific classes to help me learn more about the subject. They were mm -hmm. they're amazing parents. So that's awesome, man. Um, do you so do you st hang out with them a lot? Do you uh, like currently? Do you do things with them? You go out with them? Uh, not as much since I would say as I wish I I did when I when I started streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, streaming's taken away a lot of my social life especially since covid started uh I, i've only seen them probably twice last year if even they don't want to really interact with anyone because of covid which is smart yeah. but even w before streaming started i would say once i started streaming i was I, I hung out with my parents maybe four times a year every every like three months they would probably we go out to dinner and we do something i would text them and stuff but like actual physical interaction was probably every three months that's pretty good i mean yeah, it's it's been a tough year, uh, you know, for everyone, and and I'm I'm glad they're safe and they're they're taking you know good precautions, and I I hope they got the the uh, what is it those shots? I know that they're doing vaccinations now. Uh, vaccinations to the public. Uh, I think right now you have to be a certain demographic to receive it, unless you're a healthcare worker. Uh, I I work in the healthcare industry. I don't want to say exactly what I do, but I was able to get a shot, and so I'm I'm already vaccinated, but. They're doing healthcare industry, people with certain uh, medical conditions, and people over the age of 65. Okay. I don't know if they're widespread of the public yet, but that's the current stipulations. Mm -hmm. It's actually the wait list for it is insane, man. Oh, yeah. I oh, my God. Maryland, yes. It's freaking crazy. Oh. Um, so how about this? Let's talk about competitive gaming, right? Oh, so okay. What was competitive gaming like, or did you even engage in competitive gaming, or was gaming more or less, and we're talking about before streaming. Was gaming mm -hmm. more or less just like uh, like an open world type of thing, you know, kind of do what you wanted to do? What do you think? Uh, it was more open world when I started. I never cared to take it competitively mm -hmm. for the longest time. I would say I never was part of any tournaments or anything like that. I would say the only time I really got, so I took it seriously is maybe when I started playing COD 
Okay. Uh, maybe Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2. I used to try hard the heck out of that. But other than that, I didn't start taking gaming seriously until, like, I started uh, streaming. Okay. That's that's awesome. Yeah, most most of the people that I have interviewed with, they they say Call of Duty is mostly the competitive game they've picked. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, nowadays, you know, you see a lot of Warzone and stuff, but... You know, there's still some roots to Call of Duty that makes it such a competitive atmosphere. Oh yeah, um, and, and the atmosphere we we could talk about later. But <laughs> the the most part, like um, you've transitioned to Star Wars, and tell tell me a little bit about your intro into Star Wars. Um, I've always been a huge. The biggest fandoms I had when I was a child growing up: Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Okay. Uh, we had a whole bookcase of DVDs and the ones I watched the most were Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. I watched those almost every week, at least one or two movies. Um, and so that, that really integrated itself into my character a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really get huge into Star Wars gaming. I played all the old Star Wars games, but what made me huge did was when Battlefront 2 came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went on Twitch at the time and I was checking out these channels and I found one of my my close friends now, uh, Hi Shorty. I'm pretty. I don't know if you heard of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I saw him. He, he started streaming like literally on release. I found him and I started watching him, and I just became addicted to watching him in the game. And I guess <laughs> that's how I started playing the game a lot. Very cool. And um, so you really started to connect with your community, like with Star Wars. Oh yeah. And you started playing Battlefront too. Yeah. Awesome. Um. All right. Here's a quick question. Top three favorite Star Wars movies. Bloop. My gamer stuff just <laughs> fell down randomly. Um, top three Star Wars movies. Okay. Uh, Return of the Jedi. All right. Um, Empire Strikes Back. All right. In that order. And then... Shit. I gotta put one prequel movie in here. Ridge, Ridge the Sith. If I don't, people are gonna get mad at me. Yeah. <laughs> so, honestly, those are my top three, too. Like without even prompt so that's awesome you're on the right track with the star wars community already <laughs> uh all right man let's get into the streaming uh life so when you started streaming so you talked about streamers that really kind of like you really enjoy watching what are some mm -hmm. other things that really inspired you to start streaming um so to take it to start taking it seriously so i when i when i told you i found high shorty mm -hmm. um I, just, I i was in stream at the time really but I, I i became very involved in his community and i was watching him religiously uh mm -hmm. he knew who i was i was good friends with him i was always there supporting him and everything he did mm -hmm. um but the real reason why i started streaming seriously like the this is funny all right hold up these uh -oh. hold up my stream is spamming sound alerts you fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> actual dance. but uh the real reason why i took it seriously is because I, I i think i said something on stream that triggered him and he unmodded me for the week <laughs> oh and then and i said all right i'm gonna go stream so i started streaming <laughs> and that's how i got into it that's literally how i started streaming battlefront because shorty made me into stream by unmodding me so that's <laughs> literally how it started and, I always and, tell him you you created me, man. This is this is this is what you did. It feels like it feels like the community that you have already kind of picked up after that. Like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, mm -hmm. that that's where I started getting it from. I'm not gonna lie, I leash a little bit off him, and I tell him all the time because everyone knew everyone in the Twitch. A lot of people in the Twitch NA time zone, late NA time zone, knew that I was you know a part of Shorty's community. So when they saw me streaming, um, they already knew who I was, and they hopped in there to hang out. Uh, obviously, I didn't get numbers like I did now. It was more like 10 at the time, 5. Kind of went up to 20-ish. But it was really easy to start out because I, I I did the hardest part is integrating myself in a community and being known in there. That's mm -hmm. that's the one of the most important things. So it helped jumpstart me. And with Shorty knowing me, he was always dropping hosts here and there supporting me. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the easiest ways for me to get started. Was it difficult to integrate your personality and everything to the streaming community oh uh, i was shy at first because mm -hmm. i wasn't used to like opening up a lot on stream my personality was different then i would say i was toxic at first but then i kind of switched that over and became more of a, a a serious 
kind of gamer personality and i'm gonna be honest i wasn't the best with chat interaction back then i was pretty bad because I, I focused primarily on gaming and i just maybe read chat once every five minutes right so right. but that was my that was my beginning personality and we'll we'll talk as as the interview goes we'll talk more about how you've changed over time and some of the things you kind of picked up and mm -hmm. so forth uh so what was your life like when the first year you started streaming what was that like like what was going on in your life uh, what was that? Beginning of 2019. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in school at the time, so it was really hard to balance. I was taking, I was going to classes a lot for school, so balancing that between streaming between school and I have a full time job. So a full time job, school, and streaming was very, very difficult. I have to go to, so I work overnights. Mm -hmm. I go to classes in the morning. Then I go to sleep, sleep for about four to five hours, wake up and stream. And I was doing that for a, a while. And it really sucked. <laughs> Did you forget to eat? Oh, a lot of times, even still now, I wake up, I don't eat until uh, I end stream. Interesting. Because I, I don't have a lot of extra spare time um, between all that kind of stuff. So I wake up, I, I start streaming 30 minutes later. Then after I finish stream, I go to work. And then... Right now it's online classes because of COVID, so it's a lot more easier for me to, right. you know, for school and stuff. But it was really hard in 2019, and um, yeah, it was very stressful, very, very, very stressful. Right, and and did that create any? So did that stress? Obviously, stress creates an anxiety, or anxiety creates stress. Was there any mm -hmm. depression that was involved with it? Were you feeling a little sad or down? Or yeah, there was. Uh, I've had uh, depression and anxiety even before that. Um, when I talked about uh, when I moved out of my parents, uh, money was very hard for me then. I did have uh, an inheritance at the time, but I never mm -hmm. tapped into it for a bit. Right. So I was mostly living off of what I made and I was barely getting by. And a little something people don't know about me here is I actually, this is, this is a whole nother world too. I actually mm -hmm. owned a gaming community at the time. I was really, um, I was really big into the armor Two Daisy and I had a very oh. huge community of, uh, Daisy servers. We had about three servers, about 150 players always playing. So it was very popular, but the stress of that, in my job, not making enough money, it was, mm. and having to code for these servers all the time. It, that's where I guess my depression and anxiety really started from. And I reached a point to where I just shut down this community because it was destroying me mentally mm. and I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Um, and then I kind of got away from that depression, anxiety for a while, focused on my job. Then I started school and then streaming and then all that stress and anxiety and depression kind of came back because I was always un under, I felt like I was always under the, the pressure to meet a certain expectation on stream, always be there every day. And if I wasn't meeting that expectation, people weren't going to enjoy the content I put out. Mm. So it was kind of draining to stream a little bit, you know, it took a lot oh, it, of your energy to, yeah. it definitely was, it definitely was. So mm -hmm. it was, and, it was a hard time. And you mentioned that, um, when, this started when you started to feel the, uh, this depression and this anxiety, you had to shut down a little bit. You had to get away from the streaming community. Is that kind of how you uh, practice like mindfulness, like how you practice like self care is you get away from it and you do other things, right? Yeah. That, that's what I did when I originally had it years ago, before I started mm -hmm. streaming, I kind of just shut down that community and I just needed to focus on myself. It was nice having, you know, I was making money off it too. I'm gonna tell you, people will give you anything for just an advantage in game. It's crazy, but um, I was making money off it. But and but it's just I didn't see it as something that was good for me. And and at the time, I it was I wasn't able to pay the bills. Uh, some months were actually very bad because the the costs for that community were about a thousand. I would say a month. It was very expensive, and sometimes I didn't have didn't would make enough money, and I would have to dip in my own money. Sometimes I would go uh, t uh, two, three days without being able to afford food. Mm -hmm. And it was just very, very extremely stressful. And it w I was barely living. I was living paycheck to paycheck at the time. Mm -hmm. and that so I had. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, so, yeah, I just had to shut it down and distance myself from it. And I didn't care what people think. I just had to focus on myself. It sounds like um, even 
your financial stability, that also interferes with you eating and, and getting enough mm -hmm. for yourself because, you know, that's also important for building your own life, whatever you wanted. But at the same time, like you're taken away from, you know, base needs, right? Like mm -hmm. sleep and eating. Like, so, you know, now what do you consider that? Like, do you consider that a little bit more mediated now more facilitator or is oh way no way more facilitated okay. way more mediated everything's good now that's good man gotta make sure you're eating enough man Jeez. yeah yeah i was i was i was a skinny i was a really skinny guy so um so when you're watching your stream when you finished every every day what is the first thing you do how do you evaluate your goals evaluate my goals yeah. goals for streaming mm -hmm. currently my main goal everyone's main goal when they start streaming is to get partner everyone's like gotta get that partner gotta grind for it and that grind for partner is the most mentally draining thing ever the more you focus it more the more it's gonna hurt you and after being a, a partner the gap twitch has made between partner and affiliate has closed so much over the past five years that there's only a couple things partners get other than um affiliates get and you know it's emotes um the the clout i guess you want to call it from the the badge mm -hmm. um maybe one or two things here and there but there's not a whole lot anymore so my goals currently um I, i'm always looking to improve my stream always looking to get bigger mm -hmm. um it's very 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 hard for a lot of streamers especially for star wars right now because um uh fea by the way um star wars games just don't exist right now really like yep. there's they're, they're they announced some more there's more coming out but for every new streamer when you start streaming it is extremely hard to start as a variety streamer unless you're like the most entertaining guy on earth mm -hmm. um you're mostly stuck with a certain uh game a certain genre and mine is you know star wars and there's not a whole lot to do star wars wise Right. So I'm just stuck in a limbo right now waiting for all these Star Wars content to come out so I can, you know, pursue that. I've tried other games, other community, other stuff. You know, there is a little growth here and there, but there's nowhere near as much as I retain from, you know, playing Star Wars related stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you're playing Star Wars, you're really appealed to the game and to the community. It's not mm -hmm. much about like building and like playing Apex and getting like thousands of people. You're really playing this because you enjoy it. Right. So mm -hmm. when I think about it, like I play squadrons and squadrons is dead more dying. And, but that was the community that I was a part of and that I grew into. And it's the same concept. We're playing because we enjoy the game, not because we're trying to build, you know, to get partnership within like three days. So yeah. it, it says a lot about you that you're a part of this community, even though it's such a small community, you, you take, initiative within it and you actually really enjoy it so it really adds on to you know enjoying streaming <laughs> mm -hmm. more or less so when you were when you started streaming do you have an idea of who you, what you wanted to be or like who you wanted to be um i never took street when i started streaming i never took it seriously or expect i would be at where i am now um i kind of just hopped on to game and have a good time i didn't really have a vision for myself at the time mm -hmm. uh but i would guess seeing people watch me and i noticed this the slow growth at the time i i didn't really have a vision i just kind of gamed and i just wanted to see where it would go mm -hmm. and then then we're here basically <laughs> honestly i didn't envision myself doing anything at the time when you started streaming what did you think would make a successful streamer a successful streamer mm -hmm. uh i thought in in my eyes there's i've always thought this there's two ways you succeed on twitch mm -hmm. well there's a couple but the two main things is you either have to be a very very good top demographic of the game you play or b very entertaining in some way if you are not either one of those why should anyone watch you right why would anyone want to watch you or unless there's like you're, you don't do gaming, then there's maybe, you know, there's some exceptions to that. But if I'm talking about gaming in general, that's one of those two. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless you do something unique, then maybe that works out.
Right. So like being viral off of like a video or something like that. That too, or just getting the crap carried out of you by some 10,000 viewer streamer because Twitch is a lot all about, Twitch is honestly all about connections. That's literally what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And you carry that from the start. You still, you know, it is all about affiliation and, and connection, but mm -hmm. you know, you had that thought at the start of that stream and you carry that on till now, right? Yeah, and so I always tried to play. Uh, at the time, it was Battlefront. There's no competitive scene, but I always pushed myself to always be one of the top performers all the time in that game. And yeah, that was also very stressful as well. Uh, always trying to hold myself to an expectation that I always have to be very good at this game. Mm. Otherwise, people aren't going to want to hang around and watch. Right. So now let's fast forward to now. Do you, f now that you've become or you've gained a lot of success within this community. Um, have, is there any sense of doubt within yourself? Doubt from what well, I've, from reaching here? Yeah. No, no, I think it's, I think I'm very, very proud of what I've been able to reach and the people that have helped me reach this point. I could have done it with a lot, a lot of people, but I don't regret getting here. Awesome. I, I ask everybody all these questions. So everybody has mm -hmm. a very different answer to it. Some people actually do feel like, oh my God, like I'm here now. Like I've done so well. Like how is this possible? Right. But yeah. I, I really like your confidence, right? Like I really like when I come and watch you stream, even like if you die or like something unfortunate happens, it's still, well, no, like this fucking happens, but whatever, man, like the, the show goes on. We continue to go. We continue to grind, and we're we're still here with these high vibes. So I I actually really appreciate that about your vibes. Yeah, um, I've I've uh, I've changed my gaming stance a lot from being. I still try hard in games, but I've kind of just mm -hmm. try to understand that you know it's a game, and we're here to have a good time. You can't always be the best at everything. So I've kind of tried to have an, an even ground on being good at video games and then just you know promoting a positive environment mm. and has that so that's also changed over time now you kind of accept the game for what it is but when you started yeah. gaming and you had to be the best that you could mm -hmm. you know that was that was draining on you right very draining mentally very draining so how do you so currently how do you mediate your stress and anxiety like what kind of things do you do or that goes on in your head that helps you kind of like decompress and just evaluate it for what it is rather than, you know, grandiosity and thinking of it as like, Oh my fucking God, this is fucking crazy. Um, I would say the best way I currently do it is I don't stream for long periods of times as much. Okay. Um, I really limit to about four hours max a day, unless maybe it's my days off work. I may stream longer, but four hours max a day. Um, it really lets me, you know, disconnect from Twitch um, before it starts to get super stressful. Um, that's a that's a good way. Uh, another good way um, is like I, like I said, I don't try to be on Twitch a lot off stream. Mm -hmm. I just try to disconnect it with it a lot and just kind of focus on just doing other things, spending time with my girlfriend, focus on school, stuff like that, um, and just and just in general, not taking the gaming super seriously anymore. It doesn't doesn't it doesn't hurt me mentally as much. So your girlfriend obviously knows that you're a streamer. Mm -hmm. When you started dating, did you tell her that you were a streamer and that this is your schedule and this is how it is? Actually, she, I met her because I streamed. Very cool. One of the uh, communities, um, like one of my other friends, um, she was a moderator of his. Um, this is when I first near first started streaming. Uh -huh. uh, Battlefront, and she started hanging out in here, and uh, she, we we started to talk. We started to hang out together. Um, she started to uh, like my personality and for who I was. And I'm gonna be honest, the time I'm pretty bad when it comes to taking hints. Um, <laughs> she was she was trying to drop hints to me, and I just kind of ignored. It. And I was like, oh, okay, cool, thanks. And I was just like, whatever. <laughs> so I kind of felt bad later when she told me that. I was like, well, that was you dropping hints. I just. I, I, I'm kind of uh, at a point on Twitch to where people will say a lot of things um, and you you can't take them all super seriously. So you can't tell if like they're super seriously flirting or mm -hmm. they're just messing around. So I always just take it, you know, as someone messing around. So when she did that to me, I thought she just met, she wasn't being serious, but she actually was. 
And so, so we started talking off stream, uh, hanging out more, and then we started visiting each other. And uh, yeah, here we are now. You've been dating for about a year and a half. Congratulations, Hermie. That's awesome, man. Thanks. Yeah, Thank you're you. The, you're the first person I've actually heard that they've met somebody special online. Well, I mean, we meet special people all the time, but a significant other online. That's very awesome, man. Mm -hmm. And and that and this all goes, this all intertwines with you kind of connecting online and finding your community online. And that's, and and, and we'll get more into like persona and how that has kind of come to play here but that's really cool man that you've really started to fully connect yourself to the community online so mm -hmm. thank you yeah of course absolutely um so tell me so <laughs> so we talked a little bit about the culture in your stream and uh, a little bit about the uh the memes so tell me a little oh bit about yes. it. yeah 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 we're getting into um the i've been a memer for i like to mess around and be a memer and i guess i've kind of the culture around here now it's a lot of memes and a lot of uh i guess you want to call it sus stuff like mm. I, i'm i i i think my personality has being a twitch streamer has really boosted my confidence a crap ton in terms of mm. not being afraid of what i say a lot as long as it's not against tos but what i say oh. a lot and um i if people don't like me for whatever reason uh so I, like I, I have no problem just you know messing around with people saying stuff that you wouldn't say IRL mm -hmm. like you wouldn't walk up to a, a guy IRL and say hey homie you looking mad cute man can I tuck you in a night and kiss you right <laughs> right you I, I wouldn't say that IRL but like on stream it's kind of boosted my confidence that I'll, I'll say crap like that and it doesn't and I, I don't think of it in a negative way right and the people that come into the stream they they love they feed into it like they're in it like they love the memes. oh yeah they, they they love it they they love it sometimes they go a bit too far but they love it so, so um and you know it's great because star uh battlefront 2 is definitely a meme game like i mean if mm. you have bb90 or bb8 just taking out sith lords like nothing or or jedi like there has to be like that compilation of yeah, we're we're just gonna go straight up droid, and we're just gonna finish uh, it up. Like, there's so much, just so much trolley crap in that game that you can do. So you can't really take it seriously because it's not meant to be a a serious game. It's meant to be a Star Wars game with lots of random crap you can do in there. So, <laughs> so what really, you know, I I know that you said that you love the movies and everything, but um, there's something, there's a component of mechanics in Battlefront Two that really appeals to me. What what would it what are some reasons that Battlefront 2 kind of appeals to you? Um, for me and probably a lot of people, Battlefront 2 is one of the easiest FPS games there to just hop on and just frag out with, get into action quickly, uh, and just perform well. You can be a very bad player in COD, hop on Battlefront, um, just get lots of kills easily, because that's the thing with the game. It's not meant to be a balanced atmosphere. It has some, but it's meant to... The developers made that game. They know that a lot of people playing their game aren't going to be, you know, good FPS players. Majority of them are going to be people who play maybe two hours of gaming a week or three. They have a, they're busy and stuff. So they want to give them that experience to hop on. They want them to have them to feel like they're in the Star Wars universe. They want them to feel like Darth Vader when he goes around and kills twenty rebels. They want to give them that experience, and I think they did a really great job doing that. Mm -hmm. um, as someone who who tries to perform well, it gets frustrating at times, but I've more learned to accept it. It is what it is. Right. Uh, so that, that's, that's, that's what the game pretty much is at this point. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's, it's up. I, I, I understand, you know, like the live service being cut out and everything and how the community kind of handled that, you know, I, I like, I get that, but you know, at the same time, we kind of see the community kind of picking up this game and mm -hmm. create and, and everything with mods and such and all that but it really kind of opened up th the world to this this game that has a lot of potential even though there's no live service what do you think about that like what do you think about like you know the community really keeping this game alive rather than you know i think the developers you know they patch stuff every now and then but it's really a community that keeps it alive I think it's because they, this game had the potential to be an amazing game, but due to the greed of EA, um, it just left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Uh, really, really bad taste. And it's the Star Wars is a huge, uh, incredibly huge fandom. Mm -hmm. And ever since Disney was uh, bought out George Lucas, 
there have been like no Star Wars games that come out that have been really good. There's been Battlefront 2015, Battlefront 2017, uh, maybe some fucking mobile games or some crap here and there. But other than that, it's just been completely neglected for the past almost 10 years. Yeah. And they just want something good. And Battlefront 2017 is like the only good thing that's came out recently. So they're doing everything they can just to keep an interest in the game. Because what else What else is, the, is there to play as a Star Wars fan? There's yeah. literally maybe some old games, but that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. And the, even in the competitive scene, Squadron's the only thing that's there. And fuck sake. Yeah, that was... That was a, uh, I honestly wasn't a fan of Squadrons. Yeah. Um, I, I think everyone was disappointed. That yep. game honestly died in, I think within two, three days, that game had like 50 viewer average on Twitch. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> it died so quick. Everyone, it, it, the, the, the multiplayer is not bad. Mm. Um, it could get more repetitive. I think what I was talking about before it came out, I said, if they don't have a prequel content coming for this game, it will die mm-hmm. so fast. Because people don't understand the generation of people growing up on Star Wars or go up and watching the Clone Wars. They like Ahsoka, they like clones, they like Anakin, yada, yada, yada. They didn't grow up watching original trilogy. Um, so a lot of these people, they like prequel stuff. They like the Clone Wars. And trying to implement original trilogy, which mostly appeal to people um, who grew up watching it 30, 40 th- years ago, they're busy doing jobs. They're busy having lives. You know, mm. They'll play it, but they can't play it as much as these kids who are they don't have a job yet and they don't have all this uh they have a lot of extra time so not having a prequel content is what i think killed off the multiplayer for the game and plus honestly the story was just kind of yeah i, I like the story it's black yeah right? and 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 again, there's a lot of other internal issues with the game like the matchmaking and everything that uh, trust me, I've said it a thousand times before. I'm not going to say it again, but I, I get, I, I completely understand. I, I really respect that you said the prequels and adding the prequels in into squadrons. Um, I, I think that would be really cool because you know, we have a lot of different uh, communities within squadrons. That's like, uh, you know, we have um, fuck, we have Skull Squadron. You know, we have Splinter Squadron. We have all these different things that are actually a part of the prequels. Mm-hmm. That would be really cool to add in as a game. So I, I actually really like that idea. Um, so let, let's let's uh, rewind back to when we were talking about Persona and, and how you've changed over time. So when you started streaming, you said you were shy and that you were just kind of working on it, just working on your gameplay, but also just working on your personality and trying to find ways of being entertaining towards your viewers. Uh, how has that kind of reflected you like your true self reflected my true self yeah. uh so when you're off stream right like how I, that- I would say my online personality offline personality like not even just even offline uh, like the people I hang around my community I'll, I'll act very similar to that but like mm-hmm. in real life out at my job out in school i'm just a completely different person right uh i'm not i'm not going around acting the way i am i'm extremely professional extremely mature at what i do irl um so it's whole different different environments and i will say it's after being on twitch for so long i have slipped and said dude that's very pog irl or weird champ and my coworker looks at me and says what the hell does that mean i'm like don't never mind ignore it and it's been the most awkward shit ever and i'm just hoping he never figures out papega yeah, pretty much. So, like, you're extremely professional off stream. Do you, I, I, you know, I see some professionalism. I mean, I see the memes, but I see some professionalism coming into your stream because you're, this is your community. What, how do you kind of limit that part of you and try to say, oh, well, this is, you know, Twitch. Like, I got to be a little bit more open. I got to be a little bit more out there and more broad. What, what point, at what point do you find yourself saying, okay, I got to be a little bit more relaxed and calm and more about like just having fun. Um, I started realizing that a while ago because my person at the beginning was more just, just a try hard gamer. Mm-hmm. And there's only so much people like to hang out with people like to watch with that about people like to watch that, but they don't like to interact with you as much. So I try to change from just being a try hard guy to a try hard guy who can, you know, make jokes, make memes, interact with chat, and it just creates a more positive environment. I probably started doing that uh, a year ago or so. So that's pretty, that's where it came from. That's that's kind of recent. You know, a year ago is mm-hmm. you really started to like switch gears. Yeah, yeah. It's right. I think right when I before I got partner because uh, I've been partner for about a year. 
Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, before you got partner, I think there was probably a point where you you were going to get partner and you knew it, right? I mean, it's very difficult to get, but once you had that status, the, 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 it came to a point where you're like, okay, maybe I might have to change things up a little bit and just start, you know, once I get this status, I have to be this person or the person yeah. I want to be, right? Was uh -huh that that it was it like kind of like one day it happened or was it like uh over a series of days i'm gonna be honest i don't know how twitch partnered me without looking at my chat logs but um because <laughs> even even still i say some stuff that's not tos but yeah it's not like hateful or anything it's just stuff that i mess around with people but you know how twitch is is they don't care what these people and you perceive it as if they perceive it as something else you're out of here they it's, it's there's a there's a gray area for their tos which i've never liked I would say my personality kind of went down a little bit when I got partner because, you know, I had I had to be careful about what I said. Mm -hmm. And um, but I, I'm still very, very close to the, what I've always been. Just being a, a guy who messes around and has fun. And I, I, I think, you know, speaking for the community that watches you, I think we can respect that because, you know, you're trying to be the best you can be for us. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Twitch is kind of like this is where we fall in like this is our platform that we use but it's really about the people it's not really much about who sponsors us it's really well i mean money is f great and all but like it's not about that it's really about the people and, and who we serve so i i mm -hmm. really respect that about you man um so now that we've talked about before streaming demographics we talked about the stream now let's talk about the future um, so okay uh, let's talk about a little bit about your aspirations for the next year. Where do you see the community being in the next year? In the next year, um, honestly, I wouldn't say that much of a different direction. Uh, there's not really anything Star Wars content coming out this year besides like Lego Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like I said, we're kind of stuck in a limbo. I'm always for I always play other games here and there. Uh, recently, in the past couple of months, I've been focused on Battlefront because the Star Wars hype, mm -hmm. but. Uh, I've always played a bunch of different games and we're going to try out stuff here and there, but we're all, we're just going to be still stuck on star Wars until, uh, the next bit best star Wars thing comes out. So that's probably all that's going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the new content relies on kind of like star Wars and everything that goes on yep. with star Wars. Okay. Yeah, pretty sense. much. So that goes along with, if you envision yourself three to five years from now, it really depends on star Wars, right? Oh, three to five years. I think we'll be playing some other Star Wars games. Yeah. I mean, if you don't come out with some good Star Wars games in three to five years, I'm going down to the CEO and I'm going <laughs> to ask for a job and become a game developer because God dang, it's been forever. The owner of LucasArts is DD Man Killer. Hell yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that'll, that'll be me one day. Hell yeah, man. I'd fucking pay. I'd pay for those games, man. At least at least the community will get what we ask for, right? <laughs> yes, get what we ask for. Not Not try to think what we want, but just give us what we want. And not blast Reddit, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so how about on your schedule? Is there anything coming up that might impact your stream schedule? Um, so I am going through getting my criminal justice degree. Mm -hmm. After I get my degree, I have to go to the police academy for six months. And once I do that, depending on which academy I decide to go to, which whatever police, uh, whoever, whoever decides to sponsor me to go to the academy, um, it depends on the academy's times and that may impact the schedule because most academy times are like from nine to five or from like eight to four or whatever. Mm -hmm. So my stream may be moved forward into the evening, but I don't think there will be a point to where I will have to give up streaming because right. I'll, I, whatever, I, I don't ever want to, I I've worked to this point in streaming. I put so much manpower into this, so much effort. That's not something I have. I envision just dropping at some point. Right, like you've invested so much time in the stream. You, you, if anything, I and I've asked streamers about the same question. They said, "Well, my work schedule is really going to revolve around the stream, right? Like, there's some things that they just, they don't want to sacrifice the one thing that they've put so much work in. And again, you want to be a police officer. I could see that. Like, you've you've done a lot of the schooling and you know the process. But again, you know where your roots lie, and that's in stream. Yeah, and in the community. Very cool." Um, what about in the future? Do you see yourself improving your self care and, and, and improving mindfulness and, uh, kind of self management? Um, yes, yes. I've been trying to do that. Um, I've always, um, I think at one point the thing with Twitch is I never had days off 
Mm-hmm. Right now, I have one day off, sometimes with the possibility of two, depending on what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to increase it to two. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think at one point, I went four months straight without taking a day off from streaming. And, uh, and I just realized how mentally draining that is. I didn't have time to do anything IRL. So right now, I have Saturday off and Friday. Right now, me and my girlfriend, we hang out on Saturdays or a day. We hang out all day together. Okay. Fridays, uh, are, if she wants to hang out Friday, Friday is another day too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've been trying. That's one of the best ways I would say I've been trying to manage myself from streaming too much. So really soaking in the weekend, right? Like the weekdays, yeah. we all know it, it's it's all about work and doing the stream and doing whatever it is. But the weekends, right? Like has that been – it sounds like that's changed. Like it felt like you did way more streaming on the weekends and weekdays. But now you're like, well, <laughs> let me use up the weekends for me yeah. and for, for my life, right? A little a little, a little self-time to relax. Um, I recently just got back from um, – me and my girlfriend, we went out uh, a couple weeks ago. We went out to the to the mountains and we were hiking in them and just relaxing, having a good time. And I was away from streaming for about nine days, and it was really it was really nice just to not have to worry about that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've always been worried about taking long vacations from streaming, worrying is my community still going to be there. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Whenever you take a vacation, it's going to hit your community a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, usually it, it, it just it comes back and like a, a week later, like everyone comes back, they know you're back. Mm-hmm. So I would say people need to really not be afraid to take vacations because I probably take a week vacation every every three months. Every three months. That's pretty good. Yeah. Is it like get away from where you are right now, like your location and just go somewhere else, like drive somewhere else with your girlfriend? It something? depends. With COVID, there's not a whole lot we can yeah. do. I live in Texas. Everything here is open. Um, I don't want to get into that because the political shit, but sure. um, everything's open in Texas, so we can do stuff in Texas. But in the United States, it's very, very limited to what you can get into. Mm-hmm. So we haven't been able to go to a whole lot of places, but we were able to go to uh, go hiking, which was nice because she loves hiking. So it was a nice getaway. <laughs> do you like hiking? Uh, I never hiked before she met. I, I met her. Um, there have been, she pushes me to, into hiking too. She'll be, she's, she's very well fit than I am. I, I haven't worked out really. I've been working out more recently because of you know, getting into it. Uh, I used to work out a lot, uh, two, I used to be like a workaholic two, three years ago. I used to work out all the time, but I kind of gave up on that when I started streaming because I didn't have time to work out, right. but she got me to hiking. She pushes me. She'll be going up the mountain or she'll be hiking wherever. And I'll be out of breath and she'll be looking at me like, what's wrong? So <laughs> It's good. She's got me into it. Yeah, it's good. She's in your life, man. <laughs> You're really boosting yourself, gay. Really, like yeah, that's not just a, hiking, everything in general. Right, right, and it's really important to have those people that push you. Like before your girlfriend, did you have somebody that really kind of helped you work on yourself? Like did your parents help with that a little bit. Uh, I never really opened up to my parents about that. I uh, I never really told them how I was doing mentally um and everything so they never really knew so i was pretty much just on my own were you worried about how they would react to what you had to say i've always been a person in life to not put my problems in other people that's not how the stance you should take but i've always looked at that like people are busy they have their own stuff i shouldn't be bothering them with my own personal issues Mm -hmm. i don't I, i don't think anyone with mental uh stuff going on depression anxiety should ever take that stance but that's what my stance was at the time it sounds like so even so with your girlfriend she's kind of helped you to ask for help really to kind of yeah. branch out and say hey like do you mind helping me with something you know i'm mm-hmm. kind of frustrated with that's very cool man it's very cool to see how somebody one person can really change that for you so i think that i think she really serves you good man she's really yeah we, we both help each other out she's yeah. an amazing person so last question well Two questions, but last question for the interview. So if uh, I am a novice streamer, but for gamers, even starting out like four or five year olds, what kind of advice? Let's start there. So for for gamers just starting to get into the gaming like atmosphere, what kind of advice would you give them to kind of like understand what life is playing video games? Right. Um. Uh, take your feelings and throw them out the window. 
Um, you use feelings in gaming, you are going to get hurt. Honestly, people use a lot of people use gaming to uh, depends what you play, obviously. But if you play multiplayer games, online games, your feelings are going to get hurt. People online, they like to use online gaming as a way to unleash the stress of their lives onto other people. Mm-hmm. And you, I, and I say that sort of helped me build up a, a, a thick skin, a wall to a lot of shit. Some chat gets to me sometimes with their trolley crap they do, mm-hmm. but it's helped me build up a, a wall and a thick skin because I've been a part of some extremely, extremely toxic communities, and it's really helped me just to zone that stuff out and just, just, just ignore it. Mm-hmm. And I, sorry, could you uh, like elaborate a little bit on toxicity in like gaming? Like just what um yeah, what ahead. do you mean exactly so toxicity like uh what people say um things that happen that really kind of get under your skin um that are a part of gaming so what what creates a toxic atmosphere what creates a toxic atmosphere mm-hmm. um that's probably that would say the the place you're gonna find that the most is anything competitive Okay. Um, okay. that's where you're gonna find the most of it. People who beat you in any X, Y, or Z reason, they'll they'll use that to get under your skin. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably the where you're gonna find the most toxicity. Mm-hmm. But toxicity can be anywhere. It just depends on the person. Mm-hmm. So toxicity is really kind of correlated with investment into the game. Like the more mm-hmm. you're invested, the more you're gonna be a little bit more embraceive as a person, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So what about for streamers? Um, you know, I'm starting now. What, what kind of advice do you have for me as a novel? Oh, so streaming. Uh, so that's a whole thing. So streaming. Yeah. With streaming, everyone says, everyone says I don't expect a lot out of streaming. But everyone, on a lot of people think they do. They expect to stream two, three months. And they expect to maybe average 10, 20 people. And they still don't. They maybe just still stuck on three viewers. Right. Um, I think one thing on Twitch is you have to realize you're going to put more effort in than what you're going to get out for quite a long time, Mm -hmm. um, unless you get lucky and Twitch, in my opinion, is all about connections, all about connections. You have to get out of your zone and go connect with other streamers. You have to network. You have to find other streamers. I know people who don't network and they have been stuck at the same viewer plateau for like three four years and i know mm-hmm. people who do network and they're 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 they're, they're big now like mm-hmm. people that like when was the my community uh, when i started out i used to network like i already knew shorty so he helped me out a lot and i networked with some other streamers i liked and and that's how i i grew up a, a lot quicker than a lot of other streamers who are still maintaining 30 40 viewers years later mm-hmm. um people that are part of my community if they don't come to my chat and say hey i'm a streamer i'm going live they don't do some plug in their shit stuff like that Mm -hmm. if i find them i know who they are they're a streamer and i like their content uh, i'm going to support them because i think uh everyone i know the the struggles i know the grind of it i know it's hard uh and i want to support people who i believe have the ability to be a good content creator Mm -hmm. um so that's the first thing is networking you have to network second like i said you have to ask yourself why should someone watch me over someone else in this category i'm streaming if you can't answer that question, well, there's your answer right there. No one is going to watch you. If you can't, if you're a, you play Apex Legends, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So you, I, I ask yourself, are you good or entertaining? Okay. So you're not amazing, right? You're okay, but you're not amazing. Okay. So now you have to figure out a way to be entertaining. How are you going to be entertaining? What are you going to do that's going to make you stand out? Are you going to co- uh, per- have a persona of this this character? Are you going to pretend to be uh you know fucking the transformers guy or something something that makes you stand out are you gonna be really ener- uh, energetic with chat are you gonna be known for doing this you have to have something that stands out mm-hmm. and if you're maintaining the same viewers for months and they're not changing you're not getting any growth then maybe you have to take a, a, a step back and realize why aren't people watching me go through your vods check watch your stream if you don't even like watching your own vods that's another thing too why would anyone want to watch you it's a lot of self-reflection, and I used to do that. I used to end my streams, go through my VODs, check my audio, check check everything, check how my how everything sounded, right. how everything would sound. And uh, if I didn't like it, I would try to change it up. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a lot of just asking yourself, why should someone watch me over someone else? And if you can't have a clear, definitive answer, there you go. But mm-hmm. I would st- still stand by networking being the, the number one thing. 
Mm-hmm. A thousand percent agree. Um, and I remember you were a part of Death Watch, right? You created Death Watch. Oh. And, yeah. Yeah, I created you- that when I got partner. Uh, I wanted to create a, a group, uh, a stream team just of Star Wars gamers, mm-hmm. uh, people that I found entertaining to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wanted to make it a, a, a place, making it easier for these. Because a lot of things, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, a lot of people that Death Watch at the time were a lot smaller than they are now. Right. And I don't think it's because of Death Watch, but I do think it sometimes helps some streamers out um, to gain recognition. I think um, a lot of these streamers, I, I, like I said, I don't think it's because Death Watch helped them out. I think a lot of them have done stuff to increase themselves. Mm-hmm. But I do think it does help out some people in some way. Because when people ask me, who should I go watch? I say, hey, go check out that stream team. Go follow these guys and watch them when they're live. That was the whole mm-hmm. point of it. Mm-hmm. I, re- I, I like it. I mean, uh, I know that... Jelly is part of it, and and Benzen, he's a part of it. They're very entertaining to watch, I, I for sure, man. They're yeah, they're, they're all unique. They all got their special things about people like to watch about them. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Thank you very much. Um, so my last question is, uh, where can I find you? So what are the social media apps I can find you? And uh, yeah, man. On everything. My social media is just literally DD Man Killer on everything. DD Man Killer Twitch TV slash DD Man Killer Twitch TV slash. I'm sorry, Twitter. Slash DD Man Killer. Everything's just DD Man Killer. I don't have different names for anything else. Mm-hmm. Very cool, so, man. Twitter, keep, Twitter and Twitch are my simple. main platforms. Keeping it simple. <laughs> mm-hmm. And again, you don't use much of anything else but like Twitch and um, and again, that's very it makes it much more easier for us to find you and uh, and whatnot. Again, yeah, we um, I really appreciate you coming out and uh, doing this interview with me. Again, I'm doing like kind of research basis on. Figuring out, you know, is there a connection between social media and gaming as well as mental health? And I yeah. think you kind of really kind of put the nail in the coffin there saying like, yeah, it is. And and it's been a part of your life as well. It's been a part of my life. And I'm sure most of your stream, uh, your community. So I really appreciate you coming out and talking a little bit about your life and your journey as a streamer. Because I think we all appreciate that as a viewer uh, to get to know you a little bit better. Um, so thank you again very much, DD. And I enjoyed it. It was a great opportunity to get a chance to sit down and just open up to people about what it's actually like because everyone thinks it's, oh, you hop on, you stream, you make money, yada, yada, yada. It's, there's a whole other ball game to it involved. Right, exactly. And I even consider, like, and this is coming from a counselor's perspective, I consider streaming kind of like group counseling, even though, you know, it's not really, you know, there's a whole other eth- ethical part of it. But there's something called play therapy where you're just playing games, but you're also doing therapy at the same time. You you're playing video games, but you're also talking to your community and kind of like digesting what they have to say and kind of facilitating and mediating as well, you know. So I I think I consider you kind of like a guru in that perspective hmm. because you okay. are also facilitating their problems and the things that they need from you. So I do really respect that, man. I, I really appreciate everything you do and all the work that you've put in over the past years because, you know, it, it's good to see a, uh, somebody, you know, coming from a gamer as well as a streamer that somebody out there is also doing the same things and also working through those difficult times. So thank you again. And thank you for the, uh, thank you for the interview. I couldn't have done it without, without the community. That's, that's how it was made. Absolutely. So, um, uh, if you have any more questions or anything, um, definitely let me know if, if not, um, we can, I can send you my notes or whatever you want, but, uh, Okay. Yeah, aside from that, man, appreciate it. And um, I hope you have a good rest of your stream. Thank you. I appreciate it. It was very, very nice. Uh, what was, what's your Twitch name? So I can uh, plug you. Yeah. Twitch name is uh Poi boy TV, uh, P O I B O I TV all together. Um, Poi boy TV. Mm-hmm. All people. right. Yeah. There's this channel in chat guys. If you're interested in, in uh, his content, want to see more interviews and stuff like that, go check him out, drop him a follow. And I will also put this interview on YouTube. So if anybody didn't catch it or this will be also be in the VOD. So for anybody who hasn't seen it, like I would definitely uh, recommend like it'll be up there. So thank you, DD. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the time. Of course. Absolutely. Have a good rest of your stream. You too. Thank you. All right. That was fun. <laughs>